Your Excellency, thank you so much for joining CNBC. I want to kick off by asking you about the London Initiative. Obviously, Saudi Arabia has supported Jordan for a very long time. Why is it urgent now? I think um, the events of the day have been really great. Uh, I'm really thankful to the UK for hosting this event. It showed that the, not only the public sector, but the private sector really believed in the reform that Jordan uh, is undertaking. They have uh, gone through a lot of reform, but they faced a lot of challenges uh, with energy prices going up, uh, the cutoff of the gas from uh, Egypt following this, uh, the Arab Spring, and obviously the uh, refugee crisis have put a lot of burden uh, on Jordan economy and, and Jordan have been very, very generous uh, with the refugees and have been in the forefront of, of really protecting the refugees and, and, and servicing them. I think it is therefore very important for the world really to support Jordan. Saudi and the GCC at large, but Saudi, I could speak about Saudi, have been supporting Jordan for a long time. Uh, we have pledged uh, with uh, the other GCC countries five billion US dollars a few years back. That has been dispersed. And when Jordan called uh, last summer, we uh, met in Mecca, the, the uh, custodians of the Tehuli Mosque and the King of Jordan, the Emir of Kuwait and the Prime Minister of uh, UAE have met in Mecca and pledged another 2.5 uh, billion US dollars of support to Jordan will continue to support Jordan, and I'm, I'm really pleased with the reform that they have undertaken. We've seen several world leaders here, as well as ministers from, as you say, the GCC countries. We've seen the Secretary of the Treasury, Steven Mnuchin, as well as uh, Federica Mogherini. Why was it so important that this initiative take place? I think um, the region is very important for the world. It is very important to see stability in the region. Jordan plays a very important part of that stability. It has been very stable politically, and we need to make sure that it is stable. And for that to happen, we need to make sure also economically it is stable. So the world is, is feeling the importance of, of supporting Jordan, and I'm very pleased, really, with the response that we have seen today. And when you take a step back and look at some of the other things that seem to be percolating globally, there's a lot of fear over oil price volatility. There's worries about the U.S.-China trade dispute. There's a concern, a deep concern, about um, growing Iranian hegemony in the region and globally. What are some of the things that you see as headwinds in the coming year? I think what is really important for the world to watch for is to make sure that the economic stability uh, in the whole world is maintained. Uh, we need to make sure that cooperation globally is maintained. And I'm very pleased with the news that is coming from the U.S. and China that they are reaching agreement uh, on trade. That is very important and sends a very positive signal to the world. But also we have terrorism in the region that we really need to focus on and continue the fight. We are working with our partners around the world to make sure that we fight we fight terrorism. And, and Because ISIS and, isn't defeated. And, well, ISIS has been defeated, but still we need to make sure that they continue to be and they do not come back in, in some form in a destabilized country in the region. So it is very important to focus on that. It is very important to ensure that the World Bank, the IMF, work with the countries in the region to bring stability, bring growth to their economy. With that, I think we will see a lot of stability, not only in the region, but the world. And in terms of Saudi Arabia specifically, there's been so much progress on the road to the Vision 2030, of course. Um, what are your deepest concerns about um, the ref ongoing reforms and about the things that Saudi Arabia has to do um, to reconfigure its economy? Because analysts continue to say again and again um, that they're concerned about uh, reserves, that they're concerned about the prices going too low when it comes to oil and how that's going to impact the vision. What are your concerns? Well, my concern is to ensure that we continue implementing on Vision 2030, and we are, and we are seeing results. Uh, we, despite all that you hear uh, here and there, we have the fifth largest reserve, uh, foreign reserve in the world. Uh, we have There's no way you're going to get through it in seven years? Well, we have significant reserves, we have significant uh, wealth, we have significant economy that is growing, we are the largest economy in the region, and we are seeing the results of the reform taking place, we are seeing the uh, growth in GDP turning from negative last year to positive uh, by the end of 18, and 
we are looking for more growth uh, in 2019. We are diversifying our economy significantly. We are opening our border to more investments in the, uh, from the world. And we are opening a lot of local industries and in tourism, entertainment, uh, industries, mining. All of these are bringing a lot of jobs. It, there's time lag all, all the time when you engage in a significant reform, but it is, we are seeing the results actually happening as we speak. And finally, sir, when you take a step back um, and look at uh, the, not just the health of the Saudi economy, but the region as well, one of the things that I hear it again and again from investors and entrepreneurs, you know, there are questions about scalability of their businesses. Now, obviously, you've taken such a major step, Saudi Arabia and the UAE, in terms of that cross-border initiative. Um, would you like to see that with other countries, Saudi Arabia and Egypt, Saudi Arabia and Jordan, um, going forward, the same kind of partnership? Indeed, indeed. And not only in the region, but also across the globe. We, we we have been, I've been in Asia a few days back with His Royal Highness the Conference and, and have uh, invested significantly in India, Pakistan, and I've been talking to China and investing significantly in China, and we are expecting the same. Uh, we are working with the world and making sure that we create also an export industry in Saudi Arabia where we have a competitive advantage. Uh, that is taking place. We are seeing also a significant opening in tourism. In Saudi Arabia, we have sites that have not been uh, seen by the world, and we are now presenting a, a real story for the world to come and see and watch. I have one question, though, in terms of that scalability, because obviously we've seen a, a business like Soup.com scooped up by Amazon, but many people at the time said that it was undervalued. And so many people with uh, businesses in the region say they want to scale, but they just don't have that opportunity. Um, walk me through Saudi Arabia's plans to partner with countries like Egypt and Jordan um, to make that more of a reality. If I just take you back a little bit, when we designed Vision 2030, one of the key pillars of Vision 2030 is that we are connecting three continents. So that we wanted to make sure that we, are, we become a logistical hub for the world to come and then look at Africa on one side, Europe on, on the other side, and Asia on the east. And, and we are providing significant investment in logistics. Uh, uh, railroads, pipelines, fiber optics, where a lot of investment is going. So we are, and there is actually serious scalability opportunities in Saudi Arabia, not only for a great economy, significant economy in the region, which is Saudi Arabia, but also Egypt, Jordan, and other parts of Africa and uh, Asia. Your Excellency, thank you for joining CNBC. Thank you. Hi, I'm Joanna Bersecci and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.